When it comes to Japanese game developers, none have been more diverse in their works than Kavia. Founded in 2000, Kavia has made games of many different genres, most of them staying in Japan, but the few that did make it to the States have been hit or miss for the most part. From working on Resident Evil titles like Dead Aim and the Wii Chronicle games, the Drakengard series, the first Nier, Win Back 2, Bullet Witch, and several licensed titles like Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex as well as Dragon Ball and Naruto games. They even ported Sega Bass Fishing for the Wii and made a Korg synth program for the DS. Needless to say, Kavia have dipped their toes in the digital pond. But there's one game in their catalog that aimed to take on the urban craze going on in the mid-2000s, due to the popularity of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. An action RPG not too common from their other works, where you use your fists instead of a sword. I'm talking about the 2005 Capcom produced Beatdown, Fists of Vengeance. I had seen Beatdown on the shelf of my local EB GameStop so many years ago and was always curious about it because it kind of reminded me of Final Fight. Surprisingly enough, it was around the same time or maybe sooner when Final Fight Streetwise came out. Uh, I'll get to you one day. Anyway, like I said, Beatdown looked intriguing but I had kind of forgotten about it over time. That is until I started Viridian Flashback. So now that I've got the time, maybe Kavia created quite a pretty good game and we just didn't know about it because it got passed by, you know, due to the whole urban game fad. So let's sit down and actually take a look at Beat Down Streets of Vengeance and see if there really is something special here. Or it's just another flash in the pan cash grab on the whole San Andreas craze. I don't know. But anyway, let's take a look. The story of Beatdown takes place in the fictional city of Los Sombras. Five elite members of the powerful Zanetti crime family head to the warehouse one night to oversee a drug deal when they discover that the whole thing was a setup by Zanetti himself to frame them. After quickly escaping, the five decide to take their revenge against their former boss and clear their names, all while discovering a much darker deal going on behind the scenes. Like most games with this setup, the story's pretty thin, making it more about the, well, the beatdown. Though I do like that each of the five members have their own backstories and motivations, giving you an incentive to learn about each character, as well as get the overall picture of the story. Of course, whether or not you want to play this game five times depends on if you like the gameplay. And if you're a fan of a certain NES classic called River City Ransom, then you're in luck. Beatdown is very similar in ways to the Technos classic, in which you explore a city full of civilians and thugs pummeling your way towards the end goal with a variety of melee moves, weapons, and eventually guns that you use on everyone. And I do mean everyone. When you talk to an NPC, you have a few options to pick from before you decide to just beat them senseless. You can interrogate, rob, try to recruit them, or beat them down so bad it gets the cops involved. Of course, not all enemies will be willing for you, so you may have to rough them up a bit before they submit. If you're able to recruit new members to your gang, you can call them up to help you with tougher missions or even take part in some minigames if they have certain skills like carjacking or pickpocketing. Of course, being a wanted man or woman and walking around the city will net you the attention of both the police and local gangs, represented by the warning meters on the top of the screen. If they reach 100%, you will enter a fight every time you're spotted. To lower your ratings, you'll need to purchase new clothes to disguise yourself, with a variety of choices to pick from. You can also get plastic surgery to alter your appearance as well, though this does cost a lot of money, and seeing as how your meter will rise up again if you stay around cops or thugs too long, buying clothes is the better option. Of course, you'll need said cash to even buy any of this crap, and thankfully Beatdown has several ways to make it. Besides robbing people, you can take on side missions that pay a nice chunk of change, as well as bust up ATMs. Besides clothes, money nets you weapons, healing items, and learning new moves for your chosen character. All of this, your money, negotiation skills, and recruiting add up to your rating system, which affects your ending depending on how high it is. Speaking of characters, the five members are unique enough to not just be character skins, which each having their own stats, special move, and starting funds. 
One last thing I need to mention real quick is that Beatdown has a versus mode as well, where you can choose any of the characters you face in story mode in a 3v3 fight. It's nothing amazing, but it's worth to play at least once. So far, Beatdown is a massive game for a beat-em-up, and sounds like it could be a wild time, and it is. Man, if there ain't some big hiccups along the way. Some minor, and a few that provoke throwing your controller out the window. First, the small nitpicks. With your items, you can equip up to two, one for the black button and the white button, and it can be a healing item and a weapon, two weapons, or two heals. While you can only hold one for each button, it's odd that if you equip a healing item that you have a numerous amount of, you can only use one in a fight. This means that if you use your heal on accident, you can't back out to the menu and equip another one during a fight. Granted, when you're fighting a boss, you have infinite continues, but if it's a recruitment fight, you have the choice of going to the hospital and lose some ranking, or game over. Again, this isn't major, but it can be annoying when you take the fact that this game's difficulty spike is insane. Originally, I would started my first game on normal playing as Gina, and was getting by alright until I got to this one boss fight that no matter what strategy I tried, it was a complete cheese fest with my moves just not connecting, while his was a perfect hit every time. It was after the 9th or 10th retry that I decided to start a new game as Raven, this time lowering it to easy mode to see if there was a difference. Needless to say, the difference is night and frickin' day. Boss fights were hardly a challenge as most of them just kinda stood there and took every hit. I admit, while it was nice to progress through the story finally, I can't lie when I say I felt a bit insulted. I don't mind challenging a game, but don't make it to where the AI just brushes off every attack you throw at me and then connect hits that shouldn't connect at all. For example, here's that boss fight that I just mentioned on normal. And now here's the same fight on easy. That leads me into the one thing I haven't really mentioned at all yet in this episode, the combat itself. See, there's actually two modes of combat in Beatdown. When you're traversing the map and enemies spot you, you go into a kind of free range mode, similar to most 3D beat em ups of the day. This isn't too terrible, although the lock on is a bit clumsy. Instead of holding or pressing a button to lock onto an enemy, you automatically lock onto them when you get near them. This has been proven in other games that this is a dumb idea that doesn't work, especially when you're trying to run away and every time an enemy gets close to you, you just lock onto them. As for recruitment and boss fights, Beatdown goes 1v1 style, like a Tekken or a Virtual Fighter, and it feels a bit more stable. Though the camera is quite atrocious and loves to block your way whenever it can. Though I have to admit, it feels like maybe Beatdown was supposed to just have these kinds of fights instead of the group fights. Though it's nice that the majority of these allow you to bring some of your friends as extra lives, so to speak. Overall, playing Beatdown was a bit of a tug of war for me, with loving the game on one end and downright despising it on the other, with me kind of stuck in the middle. One thing I can't argue about is Beatdown's presentation, as it's a bit all over the place for sure. Visually, it's not too bad. The main five characters have unique designs that make them stand out, as well as the numerous recruitable thugs and bosses you'll encounter. While regular thugs, civilians, and cops all look the same. In fact, 75% of Los Sombra's police force is just this one cop cloned over and over. Meanwhile, the city itself is dark, depressing, and grimy which fits for a game all about hitting the streets and people on said streets. Audio is, to me anyway, split into two parts that make a hilarious whole. You have music that, while there are a few decent tunes to jam to, is so bland and repetitive that you'll quickly mute and add your own soundtrack. On the other hand is the voice acting that is just a delight to hear due to how goofy it is. These performances make you feel like you're on the gritty streets of a B-movie. Also, I have to give credit to Raven's voice actor for spewing profanity in a not-so-great attempt at an Irish accent. What the fuck happened here? What's the deal with you calling me here? If you're looking for a fight, bring it on! I never did like you, asshole. Takes balls to come out and say that. 
Hearing that kind of bullshit makes me want to become a traitor. I am a wild dog after all, right? That motherfucker! What if he's right? He's one of the other for a traitor. Who? A cocky asshole Aaron? Or Gina? <laughs> Seems like she's got something to hide. Is it Lola? She never talks much about herself. What about Jason? Damn it. I just don't know. Should I take them all out just in case? Shite. What if Eugene's just trying to set me up? This whole thing is fucked. Beatdown Fists of Vengeance is an interesting specimen. It's got big issues that would make you want to just give up and never touch it again, and yet there's a charm to it. You can tell that Cavia wanted to make a huge action RPG that felt similar to their other works, but with that urban setting to give something fresh for the GTA crowd, and I can't lie, I feel they succeeded. This game is definitely not going to be for everyone, I can tell you that. But for those who have an itch for an obscure, quirky game, I recommend Beatdown. Same for those who love River City Ransom and want a more third dimensional experience. Trust me, the streets won't disappoint. As for Cavia, Beatdown and Winback 2 were the only big green games they worked on, and they continued to develop titles until 2010, with Nier being their last game before disbanding. Of course, this isn't the end of the story, as one of Cavia's biggest members, director Yoko Taro, went on to direct the critically acclaimed Nier Autonoma. Or is it Automata? Still, it's nice to see a company's beginnings be as diverse as Cavia's, leaving quite a lasting impression. And with that, this is the Dali Popka saying, as always, stay green, my friends. I'll see you next time. And I'll definitely have to see you next time, or sometime, in Final Fight Street Wines. I really have to play you, don't I? Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode and want more of me and the Big Green, then click that subscribe button and the bell to get notified when new content arrives. I want to say a special thank you to my patrons for helping not just the channel grow, but me as a creator. You have my forever thanks. If you're interested in the channel and would like to help it grow further, consider becoming a patron today. For the cost of a soda or an item on the dollar menu, you can help myself and the channel provide the best source of big green programming and more. Once again, all the thanks and love.